Hi guys, in this video we're going to be covering gravitational potential energy. We'll learn to rearrange the equation for gravitational potential energy, talk about energy flow, and finish with a summary. Gravitational potential energy is the energy associated with lifting an object in a gravitational field, such as the gravitational field of the Earth. So we know that things can be attracted to the Earth by gravity. And we say that this is because the Earth creates a gravitational field. So when we lift an object in a gravitational field, work is done against the gravitational field and energy is transferred into the gravitational potential energy store of the object. So if we look at this picture, we're lifting an object up in a gravitational field and this requires work to be done. And if we look at the energy stores, what this work means is that we transfer energy into the gravitational potential store. Now, the higher an object is lifted above the ground, the more gravitational potential energy that's stored. So this object here, we have given some amount of gravitational potential energy. But this object here, we have given more gravitational potential energy because we have lifted it higher off of the ground. Now the strength of the gravitational field, G, also affects the gravitational potential energy. In other words, the stronger the Earth's gravity is, the harder it would be to lift something up. So this brings us to a point where we can write down a formula for the gravitational potential energy. We find that it is equal to the mass of the object we're talking about, multiplied by the gravitational field strength, multiplied by the height that it has been lifted. So what are the units of the quantities in this equation? Well, we have an energy here, so that's joules. Our mass will be measured in kilograms. Our gravitational field strength will be measured in newtons per kilogram. And the height is measured in meters. So this is going to be an important equation. It turns out that on Earth, the gravitational field strength is about 10 newtons per kilogram. So here we have G, that is the gravitational field strength, equals 10 newtons per kilogram. Now, quite often we will be interested in not the absolute value of the gravitational potential energy, but just the changes in gravitational potential energy. Like when we had that mass at two different heights and we were interested in the energy difference between them. So in this case, we say that the change given by the Greek letter delta of the gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength multiplied by the change in height. Okay, so this gravitational potential energy is a very important concept. So let's look at some examples. Imagine a ball of mass 50 grams falls a height of 5 meters. What is its change in gravitational potential energy? So we have our mass of 50 grams and our height of 5 meters. Our first step is going to be to write out the relevant equation. We see that the gravitational potential energy we get the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength multiplied by the height. Our next step will be to check that the units of the quantities we've been given are correct. Now we've got a bit of an issue with the mass here. We've been given it in grams, but we need our mass to be in kilograms. To get from kilograms to grams, we need to divide by 1000. So let's do that now we see that we have 0 0.05 kilograms. So now that's in the correct units. Our height is in meters, so that's already in the correct units. And so it's time to substitute our values into the equation. So we take our mass, we multiply by the gravitational field strength, and then we multiply by the height. Finally, we can use a calculator to compute the answer. So we find that the gravitational potential energy is equal to 2.5 joules. Okay, so now we've learnt our equation, let's have a go at trying to rearrange it. 
the gravitational potential energy equation can be rearranged to determine either the mass or height of the object if the gravitational potential energy is known. So let's remind ourselves of our equation. We have gravitational potential energy is equal to mass times gravitational field strength multiplied by height. So we put the product in the bottom of the triangle. So in the bottom of the triangle, we have the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength multiplied by the height. And at the top, we have the gravitational potential energy. Later on, we're going to see how to use this formula triangle to rearrange for the quantity that we might be interested in. So let's see an example now. Let's say an apple falls from a tree branch at a height of eight meters and strikes the ground, creating a change in gravitational potential energy of 7.8 joules. Okay, so we know that this change in gravitational potential energy is equal to 7.8 joules. We know the apple was dropped from a height of eight meters. And our question to answer is, what is the mass of the apple? Well, let's start by writing out the relevant equation. And that is, of course, the equation we know for the gravitational potential energy. Now, we're being asked to calculate the mass, not the gravitational potential energy. So we need to use the triangle to rearrange the equation. So let's put our equation into the triangle, just like before. So in the bottom, we've got the mass, the gravitational field, and the height. Now, we remember that what we're trying to find out is the mass of the apple. So we need to rearrange this triangle for the mass. And the way we do that is we cover up the part we're interested in. So that's the mass. And we see what's left over. And the quantity we're interested in is equal to whatever's left over. So if you cover up the mass with your thumb, what you will see is the gravitational potential energy divided by the gravitational field multiplied by the height. Great, so the, we have the equation that we want. Now we need to check the units of the quantities we've been given. And we see we've been given a height of eight meters, so we can go on from there. And we have a gravitational potential energy of 7.8 joules, so these are both in the correct units already. Great, so it's time to substitute in our values. The, the mass is equal to our 7.8 joules divided by our gravitational field strength multiplied by our height. And now we're just looking at numbers, so all we need to finish off is a calculator. We find that the mass is equal to 0 0.0975 kilograms. So as an object changes height, energy must be transferred into or out of the gravitational potential energy store of the object. So these people going up the hill of a roller coaster here, they're gaining gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is going into their energy stores. And on the other side, people moving down the hill of the roller coaster have energy being transferred out of their gravitational potential energy stores. A key example would be actually just an object falling, resulting in the conversion of gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. So we know, for example, that if we drop a ball that we're holding still, then initially it moves slowly and then it speeds up towards the ground. And what's happening there is gravitational potential energy is being converted into kinetic energy, which is the energy associated with motion. So it speeds up because it's getting more and more kinetic energy. So we have a general rule that the energy lost from the gravitational potential energy store will be the energy gained in the kinetic energy store. Let's see some examples of this. If someone drops a ball from a height of 50 centimetres, at what speed does the ball strike the ground? So let's look at our ball here and just draw this information on our diagram to help us think about it. We have this 50 centimetre height, in other words, a 0 0.5 metre height. We know that as we drop the ball, some of the gravitational potential energy is turned into kinetic energy, which allows the ball to move. So our first step to trying to find out what the speed is when the ball strikes the ground is to write down the relevant equations. Notice the plural there. There will be two important equations. We're going to be using this statement of conservation of energy that we saw before 
the energy lost from the gravitational potential store will be the energy gained in the kinetic energy store. So we're going to need formulas for both types of energy. Let's do the gravitational potential energy first. And now we need to remember the formula for the kinetic energy. So we have formulas that let us calculate the two different types of energy. Now we need to consider conservation of energy. This says that the GPE or gravitational potential energy the ball had at the top is equal to the kinetic energy that the ball will have at the bottom. So now we can use the expressions for each of the energies to get a more complicated looking equation. So that's the gravitational potential energy equal to the kinetic energy. It could be easy to lose sight of what it is we are trying to do at this point. We're being asked to calculate the speed that the ball strikes the ground at. And we see that speed is lurking in here in the kinetic energy formula. So let's rearrange the equation for the speed. So we need to multiply both sides by 2 and divide by m. We get 2 times mgh divided by m. We see that we're multiplying by m and then dividing by m, so we can cancel the m's out. So our velocity squared is equal to 2 times the gravitational field strength multiplied by the height. So our next step is going to be to check that the units of the quantities we've been given are correct. So we were told that the height would be 50 centimetres. But as we said before, we need our height to be in metres. So this 50 centimetres is 0 0.5 metres. Now we have everything we need to substitute the values into our equation. So here we see that the velocity squared is equal to 2 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 0 0.5. And so finally, of course, we put this into a calculator to compute the answer. We find that v squared is equal to 10 and therefore that v is equal to the square root of 10, which gives us 3.16 meters per second. We're going to take a look at another example now. We're told that a cannonball is lifted using a pulley. We're told that the pulley snaps and the ball falls, striking the floor at a speed of nine meters per second. What was the height of the ball when the string snapped. This is going to be just like before, we're going to use the conservation of energy, but we're going to be trying to find a different quantity at the end. So the relevant equations are the equation for gravitational potential energy and the equation for kinetic energy. So again, conservation of energy says that the gravitational potential energy before the string snapped is equal to the kinetic energy after the ball hits the ground. So we can equate these two quantities. mgh is equal to a half mv squared. So remember, we're trying to find out the height this time. So we need to rearrange this equation. We find that the height is equal to one half multiplied by mv squared divided by mg. At this point, we see that just like before, we can cancel the m's. It's interesting to notice that the mass doesn't seem to be having any effect in these equations. It doesn't have an effect on how fast the ball hits the ground and so on. So we end up with the following equation. And this looks to me like an equation which is ready for numbers. Once of course we have confirmed that we have our velocity in the correct units, which we do. It's 9 meters per second. So we are finally ready to substitute in our values. We have the speed squared divided by 2 multiplied by g. So now we're just looking at numbers, so all we need to finish off is a calculator to deal with those numbers. We find that our height is equal to 4.05 meters. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.